guys. Welcome to Chef Grace's place. <laughs> so if you're new to the channel, I do uh, food interviews and recipes online. I also started selling in real life in person at the Tiki Market in Riviera Beach, Florida, across from Pina Island. And today I have Allie Hall, who started the Tiki Market. So she's going to tell us a little bit about how the market got started and also how she got started with her produce stand um, in the market. Sure. Well, thanks for having me today. And thanks for joining the Tiki Market. We really enjoyed having your sweet treats there. And I really enjoyed your scone. So did my daughter, by the way. It was delicious. Thanks. They're, they're my favorite. I got to keep them in the freezer away from me or I eat them all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because you sit there and go back for more and more and more. Yeah, definitely a craving food. Um, well, uh, so let's start, I guess, how I got started in the business of um, produce and growing and um, sort of green the whole that first um that kind of came about when i left uh, my career in corporate world um, when i had a child seven years ago a little over october seven years ago um and so i was about 40 when i had him so that was at a time when um i was in mid-career and decided i wanted to stay home so i uh, answered an ad for a odd job on a Saturday, which would be opposite my husband's schedule. And it was at the green market. So that started me in the, down that path. And then aligned me with people. Well, first of all, I grew up on a farm in Iowa. So I was familiar with that as well. Was it, uh, where did you guys grow on your, the farm you grew up on? Well, they were commercial with corn, beans, and then pigs and cows. Um, but we had a garden that sustained us. You know, we grew everything like corn, beans, um, carrots, all your traditional potatoes, cucumbers, raspberries, cherries, apples, all the different crops that come up there. We grew those. Um, and uh, pardon me. Turn off my phone. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, we had all of your traditional um, garden grow. You know, uh, some of the things maybe kohlrabi were ahead of its, or maybe that's older. I guess more traditional, not ahead of its time. <laughs> now people think of it as, oh wow, kohlrabi. When they say yeah, it's fashionable now, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like the new kale. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, but we had that when I was a kid. Um, so I was kind of aligned with that world and then um, answered that ad. And then from there, I was connected with like-minded people in terms of uh, no chemicals, um, growing green, uh, growing efficiently, you know, not depleting what you've got in your environment. So, different things like that, community gardens. I, I began down that whole world and networking with all those people and um, establishing growers to sustain my stand. Um, and uh, through that, I've met a lot of wonderful people who then come together naturally to form a marketplace. You know, then I've got all of these people. I've been um, in different markets. But uh, now through um, natural progression, I found a, a marketplace uh, that I was in that closed. And then uh, I, along with the, the people that were participating at the time, wanted to stay. And then we opened um, a small market that was not Tiki Markets and had a little... And then from there, we developed with um, Peter Robinson the concept of the Tiki Market. And um, we're on our third season, and we are very uh, community spirit-driven, and we're, we um, consider ourselves socially conscious, or we strive to be. Um, 
there's things that we will have um, implemented where we'll not have plastic in the market over time. There's different things that we want to do to, you know, we are waterside. Or those sort of things will continue down our Tiki Market journey. But um, we have a Caribbean vibe there as well, which um, comes which with awesome. history. Yeah, it comes with the history of the marina. Um, Riviera Beach was started by Bahamians. So it okay. goes right down that. Um, it's traditionally there. Yeah, I mean, that's sort of in a nutshell how it was. I mean, I'm skipping over a lot, but a lot, Bahamians, of, history. <laughs> a lot of history. Um, PBS last year did a... Uh, series where we were included where they talked about the whole history of Riviera Beach and oh, they cool. featured several different yeah it's um all around all around the Palm Beaches was the name of it um, so oh, maybe can, we can uh, find it and link it in the description if people want to check it out we were uh before the pandemic we were an evening venue on a Sunday afternoon slash evening so we were a four to seven time frame um, and we were more, we had art and jazz on the first Sunday of the month. Um, and we would have a live musical event every first Sunday. So it was uh, pre-pandemic, though. We can't really do the large gatherings right now. So we switched. For the summer, we switched and we were a morning on this. We were Saturday morning. Summertime Saturdays, we called ourselves. Um now we're we've returned to our Sunday, but we've switched to mornings, and we're more of a farmer or a green market venue. So you have your makers, your bakers, your growers, um, and that sort of people, along with our what we had before with our Caribbean, our coconut man, our jerk chicken, our conch fritters, all of those lovely things we have at the market now. Um, so we kind of bridge sort of a lot of communities together there. And um, we come, we all, we are a lot of different cultures that come together at the Tiki Market. And it all works. Everyone has a great time. Just follow the music as the tagline there. So there's always lively music. Um well, so kind of in a nutshell, that brings us to where we are today. <laughs> yeah, that's great. I have a lot of fun. Yeah. The, uh, you know, there's you a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, cool. I'm like, you know, it's just uh, it's a good time hanging out there. I'm surprised there's not more people there, actually. So we got to <laughs> well, get the word that's out. That's the goal. That's the goal. Yeah, it's um, a family fun vibe. Um, you have in the marina there, you have the Peanut Island shuttle that carries over people about every half an hour over to Peanut Island. And what, and what, because I'm not from Florida. So everyone, what is Peanut, what is Peanut Island? Like, what is that? Well, it's a, <laughs> it's a small island that you can, if you stand in the marina, you can look and see it. And over there, you can hike on the island, you can snorkel, you can swim and be on the beach. Um, so you can take the you ferry can over. Come to the market and get all your snacks and yes. then get on the ferry and then go to the island. <laughs> yep, and you can go to the island and you can ha hang out with your family. Um, and you can even pick up souvenirs at the market. We have... Uh, uh, Singer Island, Peanut Island, and then you have your Blue Heron Bridge that is right behind us that has, um, we have Blue Heron Bridge wear. So that's our background. If you're standing in the marina, you see the beautiful bridge that goes over to the island. Does um, that uh, cost a lot of money? How much is that? Um, I think it's $15 to ride over. $15? But, uh, uh -huh. Yeah. But interestingly, I met with the uh, ferry captain today and we're working through some package deals that would involve um, some discount on market items with your ticket from your ferry ride. So there'll be some interesting things to come with that. Right. Um, yeah, there's uh, 
because we already have a lot of uh, the traffic comes over afterwards. They're hungry and thirsty. So, yeah. They need their coconut water to rehydrate. <laughs> exactly. So, and there's, you cannot, there's nothing to purchase on the island. Everything has to come over with you. Um, and there's, there's um, on the island also, there's the JFK bunker, um, which you can't tour the bunker right now because it's closed for renovation or maintenance. Um, yeah, but it's, you can observe it, you can see it. And you can hike the island. You can actually, even if you wanted to take a camping trip, you can camp overnight on the island. What is the JFK bunker? That is where he uh, hid out or had available to hide during the war, the president, JFK. It was his bunker. <laughs> you know, someone at the market, the guy who sells the... Uh, the wax yeah. was saying something about that and I thought he was just like a QAnon crazy person or something. <laughs> uh, no. Up until I, like, right, I, think, <laughs> I think a year ago they closed for renovations. Yes. But oh, the yeah. um there's they'll reopen and there's sort of a small museum there that you can go in and see. And the gentleman that runs the ferry also operates the museum. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so there's some interesting things. And you have the water sports there, too. You have the kayaking. So you could rent a kayak and paddle out to the island also. All right. And it's, there's free parking, yeah. guys. There is free parking. Um, and you can uh, charter. There's also Tipsy Tiki that goes out of that marina that you can charter. It's a little um, floating bar. So you can have a little party in the bar and flute. So there's a, you can make a day of it and come out to the Tiki. Yeah, with free parking and admission. And every other, this, this coming Sunday is Neil live on the saxophone from 12 till 3. Um, Neil toots Franklin. Uh, so he plays live every other Sunday from 12 to 3. That was the guy who was there two weeks last ago. Two weeks ago. Yeah. He was good. Yeah, yeah he's, um, he's a good, good sound. Um, as far as uh, everything we have, we didn't talk about the vegan options we have. So we have the vegan, we have your traditional deli dogs, then you have Cardona's um, Cafe, so you can come out and have breakfast with them. Um, the Foster's French Toast and the Pueblos Rancheros. There's, um, you can come out and enjoy breakfast on the intercoastal. You've got a gorgeous view, right? Yeah, the view is beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, we need to talk about, too, that you can bring your pets there. It's very pet-friendly. Um, there's the green grass for them to run. There's the small beach also that they can play down by the water. Um, you've got the pet wants that's there um, with their custom all natural pet food, which you can arrange yeah. to get delivered as well. <laughs> oh, wow. Mm -hmm. There's cool. quite a bit. Well, and you, you have um, great offerings. What will you have next week? This Sunday. Well, coming. so the idea is, um, so I do these food interviews and I also do recipes. Um, so I want to obviously build my YouTube following so I can get monetized with that. But also I'm going to be teaching virtual classes, everybody. So <laughs> if, uh, I'm not really sure what I want to do yet. So if you're, um, you know, whatever you want to learn, people listening, Put it in the comments below so I can get an idea of what you guys want to learn. But next week it's market. I think this week I'm going to have a Cinnabon uh, video. So I think I'm going to be bringing some of that. And also some of the stuff I had last week. I'm going to be making more focaccia. Oh, I'm yeah. going to be, um, I might do a different, like a focaccia with different toppings. So it's more like a pizza bread. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll still keep one with herbs on it because that one's actually vegan. Um, 
which I didn't realize until one of the people asked me, I was like, no, this isn't vegan. And then I thought about it and I was like, oh shit, it's vegan. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Um, I can link you with the one of my farms that I go to new gen, new gen in Waxahachie. Uh, they're the growers of some of the herbs that I bring the dill, um, parsley, cilantro. They have different um, exotic means too. So you could have some of that if you wanted. Yeah. yeah. I'm also looking for some um, like berries and like fruits that would be good for a uh, cobbler. Like a what strawberry? Strawberry. strawberry. Any, any berry, even like just like fun stuff. Like I used to make the cobbler with mangoes and mango season um you know anything that's seasonal well is i have overripe because that makes the best cobbler <laughs> you know i have um, it's not mango season but i have a big stash of mango in my freezer from florida mango season that to make something fun that's from all the local trees um there's a vendor friend of mine that has a bunch of trees in their yard, and uh, they came from there. So I got a big stash of delicious mangoes. Yeah, the mangoes are so good down here. They'd be awesome. There's always the citrus too. I've got the, you know, the Florida tangerine, the honey tangerine, um, grapefruit. I'll have to get my hands on some more green river, river grapefruit from yeah i like the way the curd came out but i'm actually thinking that it might be even better with the um the ruby red one like the super sour one mm -hmm. you know because there was just so much uh there's so much butter in fat and curd that it it really like mellows out the flavor yeah and i kind of wanted it to be a little bit sharper so i was like ah Needs more zing. Than, well, they say that the white grapefruit is like grapefruit for children. That's probably why I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, if you I wanted, mean, if you have anything that you want to do with CBD, you have um, several different varieties and you can go out and learn about them at the farm too. And uh, yeah, they, I actually uh, well, wrote a book about uh cooking with marijuana um hey. it's available on amazon <laughs> it's, uh, called verde cooks but uh sorry but i have a lot of experience with uh cannabis hey. and um i could definitely you know gear that just towards cbd because you know laws in florida aren't up to the other parts of the country yet <laughs> But well, uh, they um, they are the first you pick a farm here in West Palm Beach, and everything has been uh, laboratory analyzed and cert certified, and it's all um, THC free. So everything and you receive the laboratory analysis, so that you everything is legal when you have it. So you can. I'll have to take you out. Um, and link you with the grower out there so you can make all those connections as the chef with them. That'd be awesome. Because cool. uh, CBD is a, uh, it's fun. <laughs> yeah, it has a lot of benefits. Uh, pain relief, uh, muscle spasm relief, lots of things. Lots of people that have neurological disorders too. It's a lot of different medicinal qualities which you know, but you don't really we'll see That's yeah, about yeah. Um, I started uh, cooking with cannabis because my ex-boyfriend was a veteran and he had terrible PTSD he was in Iraq and Afghanistan and he was um, he was a part of his community of veterans and they all kind of they all smoke pot you know and um it was just like to the point where it doesn't matter if you're smoking cigarettes or if you're smoking pot, like you're going to get the yellow teeth. You're going to get the cough because you're inhaling smoke. Like that's what it does, you know? <laughs> so, um, so that's how I started 
cooking with it. And, um, you know, it, it was harder back then because they didn't really understand like CBD versus THC and all that other stuff. So now it's a lot more, even since I wrote the book, like a lot of the science has changed. Like, um, for, like, for instance, like I didn't know, um, when I wrote the book that if you decarb, uh, CBD, you can actually convert some of that into THC. So you have to be careful. So like, you don't just don't decarb the CBD. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah. Interesting. So there's a lot of science behind it, but I, that, I love cooking with that. Um, I don't like use that very often, especially before this, I was a flight attendant. So definitely didn't do it because you have to, you know, get random drug tested and all that stuff. <laughs> but, well, it's free of its THC. Yeah. But, um, you know, when I, I was living in other states, you know, we do the THC stuff too. So I learned a lot, but, um, it was just, uh, you know, the science is, we've learned a lot more in, even in the past five years, you know? Oh yeah. Sure. So. Um, well, it's also it's something, if you have any musicians, we're always open to local, inviting um, some local talents to perform on an odd Sunday morning. So if you have any local music talents, we, we like to, everything, support local, keep it in our community. Yeah, of course. Got to, that's the, um, I'm glad that it's like the new trend, you know what I mean? But it should have been the trend. Well, yeah, you know, it's great for us that right now it's highlighted because it's really supported. And I think that'll really help us in growing the market. Customers. And we're our third season in this year, so. What is your, uh, like the Tiki market is, the tiki market but what what is the name of your produce stuff like what's oh, your business ali's farm stand ali's farm stand <laughs> easy to remember <laughs> <laughs> yeah i've been lake worth my customer let's see lake worth i've been there for seven years this year so they uh, they've watched me grow in, over the years and i have customers that come back here after you. Do you have a garden at your house too? Uh, this year I have pots. This year. I'm not growing because I'm moving. Um, but I have other, I mean, I'm always at the farm, so several farms. <laughs> so I get the fulfillment of the, you know, growing. And I'm looking to buy my own. Is what the goal is. So we'll see. Cool. Yeah. We'll see. I'll keep you posted on that adventure. Well, it's gonna, you got to document it, put it on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to be very good for camera. <laughs> of course you are. Do it right now. You're doing it. It's great. <laughs> we'll see. No, but, um, yeah, the market, I've always said the market going to be funny at them because we have all the characters of the reality show, you know. <laughs> the market is lively and fun, so. It's a yeah, fun but you make it, you make it lively and fun. You're like the life of the party out there. Like, you know, every adult, everyone comes straight to your stand and then they branch out from there. Like I'm like towards the end of the market, I was like, I'm just going to wait for these people to go to her stand and then I'm going to get <laughs> grab, them <with> the, <laughs> grab them with the free sample. <laughs> yeah. You, um, they, uh, definitely they're after the seasonal citrus. We have a lot of, um, that's the highlight of my stand is seasonal for the citrus. So they, I carry, you know, honey bells, honey tangerines, Indian River ga grapefruit, or pink grapefruit, or ruby reds, or blood red oranges. Or there's so many different. Right now, there's temples that are in season. Um, and, oops. 
Sorry. Um, there's temp there's temples that are in season, which is a an old Florida orange, um, which everyone says. Somebody needs to get that. Which everyone says tastes like their grandmother's orange juice. So whenever that season comes around, everyone gets reminiscent of their grandma because. The temple oranges used to be, I think, the primary one that was grown in Florida, or one of the main ones. has a really distinct flavor, kind of like cotton candy-ish. I describe it. Huh. And then you have um, the honey bells, the honey tangerines, the Florida, right? Valencias are just in season. Um, so you have a lot of people that are citrus buffs, too. And... People, I think, in general, like we just discussed, are on board for healthy food. So having the greens that I have at the stand, like the, the purple mustards and the um, maybe mustards or collards, those were uh, typically they're just harvested the night before. So they're really fresh. And that's not when you go to the grocery store, you don't get that fresh. So. Yeah, for people listening, like. When you get your food in the grocery store, usually it was on a truck for like two weeks before I got to the grocery store, getting driven from California to the East Coast or from Mexico. So, uh, you know, to have it harvested the night before, not only is it going to have more of the nutrients, but uh, it's going to taste better. And if you don't get to cooking it in, you know, one or two days, it'll still be there. <laughs> yeah, it's still yeah, it still will have some shelf life to it. And it's not a lot of things depend. I mean, there's also seasonal regional things that are delicious that I may carry sometimes just because if you're the closer you are, the fresher you are and the more friendly you're grown or you don't, if you're California tends to have to be preserved or treated to be able to travel so far. So if you've got preservatives, then you're going to affect the taste and the quality, I think. And then we all know the other things that come. So. I mean, yeah, they might not know, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. it's just a, it just tastes better and it's a fresher, better quality. If you can get, if you can eat what's in season, it's the best. It's yummy. And it, I mean, everybody's season too. North Florida, they do a lot of great growing. North Florida plant city strawberries. They're so good. Um, maybe we'll have to get some plant city strawberries. I got, I have a couple strawberry plants actually, if you want some. Did you, I, did you get them from our market? Roland, no. Roland the plant band had um, strawberries this year, strawberry plants. Lots of them. So I think. Um, yeah, Baja Bakery got some strawberry plants from it. Oh, okay. Cool. Well, yeah, I gotta check out his plants, but I didn't uh, Yeah, you'll have to check out all of these herbs, tomatoes. You can, the market offerings have a lot. You have your uh, picklings, you have your fruit cups, you have your desserts, you have your plants, you have your clothes. Your clothing, you know, your fashion, your jewelry. We have a lot to offer. Oh, here are my kids in the background. <laughs> anyway, um, well, we much appreciate you having us. Tiki Market loves having you, and we thank you for, I thank you for having me on today. Of course. <laughs> All right, guys. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to come out to the Tiki Market at Riviera Beach in Riviera Beach, Florida. 190 East 13th Street, Riviera Beach. We are located in the Marina Village uh, on the promenade, which is next to the Peanut Island Shuttle Boat. So you can make a home day of you can check out Peanut Island. Have a good time. 
come buy some pastries, come buy some produce, you know, yep. there's Bring plenty in. of alcohol. <laughs> Enjoy breakfast, lunch, and you can even take home supper. And you can have all different barbecue, punk fritters, turkey chicken. You have a guy open a coconut with, with a machete for you. Yeah. <laughs> Feel like you're on the island. Yep. All right. All right. Well, have a good one. Thank you. You too. Okay.